For our opening song, let us sing, We Gather Together. Shall we all stand, please? Can I please ask everyone to kneel with me for our opening prayer? <coughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to bring us here to the College of Medicine to worship you and give praise back to your name after a very busy day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to join with our classmates, our friends, our teachers, and our guests. Um, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Tonight, Lord, I pray that you be with us as we listen to the message. Tonight, I pray that you be with our, um, the deliverer of the message, Pastor John Lomakang. Please give him the wisdom and the knowledge, Lord, to convey the message that you've uh, inspired him to share with us tonight. Please open our hearts and minds to understand and accept everything that he will be uh, saying tonight and hopefully we'll be applying it into our lives uh, we pray that you be with us throughout this service lord i hope that after this service we may come out uh, refreshed and renewed with strength and inspiration that comes from above uh, we ask that you protect us while we stay here and we thank you and we love you lord i pray this in your loving name amen Good evening, and happy uh, midweek to all of you. It's certainly a very, uh, uh, it's a privilege, right? It has only been a week of our revival, 
from a topic of absolute uh, reliance. And here we are. We continue reviving ourselves spiritually. And we thank Jem for doing the whole week of uh, revival into our minds. And we're so thankful that today, this evening, we are privileged to have an extension of uh, our guest speaker, John Lumakang. And uh, we sure are very privileged that he will continue to give us and more revive us spiritually. From our academic uh, requirements, then uh, of course that we have to be continue to be refreshed by the Holy Spirit as we continue on our continuous uh, services uh, for the Lord to tonight. Uh, I know only John as uh, first thing I have learned about him is uh, in the Heritage Singers because I also was a member of a group, a witnessing group here in the Philippines and most of the time we, uh, we used to be inspired by imitating some songs of the Heritage Singers and that's where I've known him. Uh, the, then, I, then regularly I see him in uh, 3ABN. So that's far as I know but uh, our Dean, Doris Mendoza, will introduce him. Uh, I'm sure that he has uh, more experience and know, know John more than I do. Okay, so let's call on the Dean. Happy midweek, everyone. This is indeed a privilege to be here in the same hall with Pastor John and wife, Angela. Pastor Jan has had a very important role in my conversion into the SDA faith. I first heard him in the 3ABN when I was searching, and as I listened to how he expounded on the Word of God, I was truly convinced that I needed more enlightenment. And he led me after many years of searching to where I am now. So I believe, my beloved students, that this College of Medicine would probably taken a little longer have I not been invited to be the founding dean at the exact time that God wanted it to happen. Can we say amen to that? Yeah. Okay. Taking after our speaker. So I did a little research. Pastor John is a native of New York. Although he has Filipino roots, probably he's going to share that with us. He received most of his education there. And he has been a professional singer, as described by Dr. Jody, with a heritage singer. For more than 30 years, he has sang with them and has gone to the Philippines also as part of the heritage singer, singers uh, for probably twice before now. He is an ordained minister as in, an, in the SDA church, and he has more than 30 years of pastoral ministry. He began his evangelistic ministry with Pastor Doug Bachelor of Amazing Facts, who visited us also a few years back. He is also a certified marriage counselor. His pastoral ministry has been in the Northern California Conference Iowa Missouri Conference, and presently the Illinois Conference, where he is the pastor of the Thompsonville SDA Church, located at the 3ABN Worship Center. If you want to catch him speak on many topics, you can just log on to the YouTube because he has been presenting such topics as uh, anchor, four Anchors of Truth series on 3ABN, including Unclean Spirits 
and unclean spirits unplugged. This is about music and how it distorts worship. A series on the occult and on the inter entertainment industry. Very interesting. We should invite him for another one week series for that. So Pastor John, I think he's agreeing already. <laughs> Pastor John is a singer, songwriter, author, musician. Pacific Press publishes his life story in a book titled Abandoned But Not Alone. So get a hold of that book. He has three music CDs and I think he brought some with him. Surrender, Never Alone, and The Call. And with a DVD titled Songs of Hope and Comfort. He has come with his wife, the beautiful Angela, who has worked also at the 3ABN radio for more than 12 years, where she is an associate producer and also hosts the radio program called Crossroads. So my beloved, let's just uh, concentrate on the words of our Lord through his mouth peace tonight, Pastor John. Condemned to die on a cross For crimes he had done He was guilty Everyone could see But his destiny was changed As he looked at Christ and said When your kingdom comes Remember me in paradise that day he stood just like the Lord had said he would surrounded by those who have gone before one said friend how do you come what are the deeds you have done with tears in his eyes I can hear him reply There are no merits to my name No works that I can claim He who brought me here told me to Suffering of God's Son, I have come by way of the cross. I had nothing to claim but my guilt and my shame. Hopelessly lost, I could not find my. 
And what it did for me that day Was a price I know he paid By his grace I too can say I have come by the way of the cross I have come by the way of the cross It is nothing I have done It's the suffering of God's Son I have come by the way I see millions gathered drown the throne From every kindred and tongue Those redeemed by the blood of the Lamb As they cast their crowns down at his feet this will be their story this will be their song we have come by the way of the cross we have come by the way of the cross it is nothing I have done Suffering of God's Son, we have come by the way, come by the way of the cross, of the Good evening, everyone. So glad to be able to spend this evening with you. Let me just adjust this. It's the Filipino height. It's been such a joy to be here during the week. I am convinced that um, the Lord sent me here to be squeezed. And what I mean by that is when I go home, I have, I have to get a refill. But it's been so fulfilling. Thank you. That feels better. I felt like I was on the roof looking down. <laughs> it's been so fulfilling for my wife and I to be here during the week. We've enjoyed so much being on a campus where we have seen young people dedicated not only to their education but to their Lord. And every morning it's humbling when we walk into the church find more than 2,000 students sitting in their seats, whether it is required or not. I know that it's not that easily done in America. And to see them sit there in a non-air-conditioned building with about 3,000 fans blowing and enduring 
the challenges of the morning and then come again to do that again in the evening. And we've been touched by the prayers. So many young people have pulled us aside to pray with us, which has really, I believe, been a strength in our hearts. And one of the first songs that I did when I was on this campus was done right here. Four of your students pulled me aside and said, we have to sing Got to Do Right. I think they're in the back. <laughs> they're the culprits. But um, Dr. Mendoza, who has found a place in our hearts, have really asked my wife and me to come this evening. Honey, would you please stand? I know people have been looking around, but I want you to see the young lady that's held my heart captive for the last 35 years. When my wife and I travel, people often ask, when, we, when I request another ticket, they say, well, what is your wife going to do so that we could justify paying for the ticket? I said, she's going to be my wife. <laughs> what else does she have to do? You know, the Bible said it's not good that man should be alone, and I believe that. So thank you, honey, for just coming to be by my side. When I'm done talking to you, I can go back to my room and have regular conversation with my wife, and I've been so appreciative of that. Before I get into the message, I want to encourage you to come Saturday evening. Uh, whatever, bo whatever voice I have left, I'm going to use it on Saturday evening to share God's leading and guiding through our lives. Uh, New York City, how my wife and I met. Uh, my mother abandoned me when I was three months old and left me at a babysitter. I want to tell you how the Lord worked that out. A, t a story nothing short of a miracle, which is in that book, Abandoned But Not Alone which we are re-releasing because it's run its course and the publishers gave it back to me to update it. But uh, also, my wife lost her father when she was three years old. I did not know my mom or dad for many, many, many years. But Lord, when he has a plan for your life, the tragedies of life cannot cancel God's plans for your life. So tonight, as you're getting ready to go out into the world and to transform the world, I want to share with you what I believe is the key to success. The key to success. We're also going to consider something that many people don't stop to consider. Not only the prophetic vision of the future, but something said by the prophet Amos. That if we don't prepare ourselves for it, we can be taken captive by it. So bow your heads with me as I ask the Lord to guide in this message. Loving Father in heaven, the privilege is ours when we give our mind to the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, come now and speak to my mind, speak to my heart, that what is said will touch the hearts and lives of those here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, there's a particular passage that I want to share with you. A very brief verse. Bring me up just a touch. I feel like I'm going down. I don't want to lose my voice. Amos 8 and verse 11, I read the following words. The prophet says to us, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Amos the prophet begins by developing a picture for us that many of us don't see. He said there's a famine coming. This famine is not for bread and water, which is the basic sustaining things of our lives. but something that is more valuable than bread and water, which is the Word of God. He said there's a famine coming that will catch the world unprepared. Not for bread, not for water, but for the hearing of the Word of God. When you look at the development of the New Testament church, you find that 12 times in the New Testament, the success of the early Christian church is described. And every time the early church is described and its successes are outlined, each time it is linked to the preaching of the Word. The preaching of God's Word was the foundation for the success of the New Testament church. Praise the Lord. Thank you for whatever you did. 
I appreciate it deeply. Amos the prophet warns us of a coming famine. A famine not for bread nor for water, but for the hearing of the word of God. And he says when that famine hits the world, every continent, he said in that critical moment men will seek the word of God, but they will not find it. They'll search from sea to sea, from east to west, from north to south, and the word of God will be nowhere to be found. I prize the word of God above any other book that I have in my library. I read a lot of books, like devotional books. I like to read books on graphic design and music production and video editing and all the things. I'm a person that, I'm, I'm a gadgetarian. I like gadgets. But I like to learn how to use these gadgets. I like to find out what goes on behind the actual operating systems of many of these gadgets. When I go to many stores in the States, my wife often tells me that I always stump the technicians. I ask them questions that they have to go back to their supervisor and ask. I ask them questions about gigabytes and terabytes and uh, what's, the, what's, the, uh, what's the production rate Questions that go around my mind that are deeper than just the surface questions. But deeper than any technical or medical question that will ever be asked is the mind found in the Word of God. So when you go into the world and you're seeking success, it is tremendously important to gain a knowledge of the workings of the, the, the functions of the human body. And I am not tonight going to even try to be medical because I will sound foolish. I'm going to stick to God's word where I know that my safety lies. When you study the success of the New Testament church, you find that 15 references to the success and the growth of the New Testament church, every one of those successes is linked to the preaching of the word. Effective discipleship began in the New Testament church by the preaching of the word. In Acts 4 and verse 31, Dr. Luke writes these words. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. The word of God is intended not only to sow seed, but to produce a harvest. And the harvest that is coming can only be effectively accomplished if we sow the Word of God first in our lives and then allow the Word of God to permeate through our lives through the reflection of the character of God. The New Testament church had that kind of success. The Bible says in Acts 12 and verse 24, every attempt that the enemy made to prevent the church from growing, the Bible says, but the Word of God grew and multiplied. And so if the preaching of God's Word was needed at the inauguration of the church, how much more is the preaching of God's word needed at the coronation of the church? The church triumphant is soon to become, sorry, the church militant is soon to become the church triumphant. Even in the words of Jesus, when he outlined the conditions of the last days, he said these words in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. For nation will rise against nation, and that's a fact, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Now the signs he describes are often catastrophic, epidemic, and they describe deprivation. But they're one of those signs that go farther than a cataclysmic evaluation, and that is the word famine. You see, famine can only exist where there's a scarcity of food. And a scarcity of food can only exist where seed is not being sown. And the Bible describes the Word of God as seed. So while people may have abundance of physical food, if the Word of God is not being sown in your life, you can be a casualty of the famine that's going to grip the Word, the famine for the hearing of the Word of God. All the cataclysmic signs are being fulfilled, but the one sign that will, that will actually announce the collapse of humanity is the scarcity of the Word of God. It's amazing in America, we have Bibles in so many different forms. 
We have Bibles on iPads and Android devices, on cell phones. We have translations on the internet. And you can find Bibles in all different kinds of languages. What amazes me is that with the Word of God being so prevalent, why does it seem that ignorance is even more prevalent than the Word of God? It's not that the Word of God does not exist. It's that men are eating the wrong thing. Men are seeking after the wrong thing. Now, I know that you have prepared yourself to go out into the medical field, and praise God, we need doctors and medical technicians in every age. There will never be a need as long as sin exists. There will never not be a need for medical staff, for people that have studied the workings of the human body and the human mind. But let me, let me shake the core of your future with these words. You can be the most successful in your field, but Matthew 16, verse 26 asks you these words tonight. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? My wife and I lived in the Northern California area for many, many years. And let me just give you a peek into the Filipino culture in California. Uh, we have a lot of Filipino friends, as was said briefly. Uh, my roots, my grandfather is from Leyte. My mom is Filipino and white. I'll show you the pictures on Saturday night. You'll see some of my family culture. I've been to the Philippines about four times. Many of the Filipinos that come to America are very well educated, like most of you, like almost all of you. Very successful. But they often become enamored by materialism. They, they, they buy the largest houses, the most expensive cars. They, they begin to compete with one another. Who can have the largest house, the most expensive vehicle? They, they, in many cases, work themselves to a place where their economy, their salaries, cannot sustain their materialistic thirst. So instead of just working a job, they sell insurance. They sell Melaleuca. They sell phone cards. They sell prepaid legal. All these in an attempt to win the race for materialistic possessions. But the Bible says, what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What shall he give in exchange for his soul? So in light of that, Jesus gives us this recommendation. In Matthew 6 and verse 33, he says, but seek first. What word did I just say? First. Seek when? First. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And watch the promise. And all these things will be added to you. And you know, when the Lord says all these things will be added to you, the Lord will never give us anything that's going to drive us to the place where we forget how important it is to live for his glory. So as you accomplish, as you are excited about your board, your final exams, beginning that job, if you have one lined up, please, for the sake of your eternal security, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all these things will be added to you. The reason why this is vitally important is there is enough knowledge in the world that we can be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And Hosea the prophet said that of the people of God, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. You have not rejected medical knowledge, there's educational knowledge, there's theological knowledge, there's knowledge about so many different areas on this campus and we are just excited about this campus. As a matter of fact, my wife and I, when we go back home, we're going to recommend to students in America that AUP is the best kept secret in Asia. an accredited education at an economical price. The problem with our world today is deeper than our economy. It is our spiritual condition. In a recent article I read by uh, a leader of a post-modernistic movement, actually he's commenting on post-modernism in America, a Reverend Dr. Isaac Katorse, in an article called Postmodernism and it, its Influence in the Church, he writes these words, and listen carefully. 
He says, it is bothering today's generation that our universities are turning experimental rather than rational. Decision as to what is true is intuitively done by means of seeing and not by deep thinking. He is saying we are often turning to our digital devices for answers rather than taking the time to dig, turn the words, turn the pages of the Bible. You know, you can find an answer that quickly on the internet, but the Word of God is not that way. The Word of God is the most valuable treasure, but you have to dig into its pages to find those hidden gems. And he's saying this generation is losing that skill. He goes on to say, God designs our ears to listen and our minds to think with conscience, but our present form of communication via visual easily makes our eyes listen devoid of conscience. Due to the heavily influenced existence of internet, television, and cell phones, conceptual and analytical thinking can bore students to death. And he assesses the ingenuity and creativity of America. Another gentleman by the name of Samuel Popejoy, after assessing all the things that America has contributed to the world, you know, if it were not for America, we would not have the internet. If it were not for America, the Western world, there would be no Apple computers. There would be no Microsoft. America has contributed much to the world. But after assessing the ingenuity and creativity of America, Samuel Popejoy introduces the unpredictable twist of the direction of our world with this statement. He says, here are 10 warning signs that civilization is collapsing and that all the hard-won benefits for which countless generations have fought and died are going with it. Here are the 10 reasons why he has cited that civilization is collapsing. He says, we live in a world that has turned to gender fluidity. Have you heard that phrase before? But people are not sure what their gender is any longer. I hope you're not confused. But that's the kind of world we live in. In America, I was reading an article that some person whose mind is not under God's control wrote an article and he says that there are presently 123 different genders. Now you're in the medical field, you grapple with that one. He says also reason number nine, the collapse of the family, the collapse of the marriage, the rising dominance of the virtual world. People are being pulled in by electronic devices. Their minds are not controlling the devices, the devices are controlling their minds. He points out that this generation is one of the generations that gets glasses at an earlier and an earlier age. And in the medical field in America, many of the students are coming to hospitals complaining of tendonitis in their thumbs. You wonder why? <laughs> the rising dominance of the virtual world. He also points out fusion with technology, AI, artificial intelligence. He says our, our machines are telling us what to do rather than us telling our machines what to do, artificial intelligence. He, he goes on and says, mass immigration, inequality under the law, the erasure of our history, forgetting the value of how we've come to where we are today, rising financial inequality, drug abuse. But there's one that caught my attention that I want to share with you briefly right now because this represents your generation. A word that you may or may not have heard before, it's a word called nihilism. Say that with me, nihilism. N-I-H-I-L-I-S-M. You want to have fun in research? Look up the word nihilism. Nihilism is responsible for Generation Z. Have you heard of Generation Z? Generation Z is actually Generation Zen, but he describes nihilism before he goes into the deeper description of Generation Z. Listen to what he says as he analyzes what nihilism means. Nihilism is the philosophy of postmodernity preaching that there is no sacredness to socially agreed upon meaning. That means when the Bible, when we get together and we determine that for society this is a social path that we must follow for the good of humanity, he says nihilism 
says that there is no sacredness to socially agreed upon meanings and that object fact is a delusion. Morally, nihilism teaches that this implies that all restrictions are ridiculous. That's this generation. And that any act is permissible. In postmodernity, each individual is separated in a dream of subjective reality, meaning they live in a world that creates, that has been created in their own thinking. And they are perfectly comfortable to be secluded in the corner all by themselves, 24 hours a day, living in their dream world of subjective reality. He continues, he said nihilistic individuals have no reference point to the outside world. This breaks the civil character in the individual, rendering him into a spineless nobody with no investment in his own betterment. That's the generation that you're a part of, a nihilistic generation, but he goes even deeper. January 3rd, 2018, Telegraph News describing Generation Zen says, Generation Zen has Buddhist origins that began in Asia. Generation Zen is really the relaxed generation. This generation born after 1990, how many of you are born after 1990? I can't put my hand up. You can tell I wasn't born after 1990. This generation born after 1990 are defined, listen, by having a blasé attitude to jobs, a blasé attitude about politics and pretty much anything else in life. In other words, Generation Z, there are very few things they care about, be it missing the bus, getting turned down for a promotion, or failing to find a spouse. They simply shrug their shoulders and move on. They choose their smartphones over moral values. Don't allow Generation Z to pull you in. That's why what this generation needs more than anything is a return to the unchanging, life-bettering, mind-balancing content of the Word of God. Can you say amen to that? If you have anything in your backpack when you go to work on the daily basis or in your classroom, try your best, and let me show you how to break away from nihilism, try your best not to have your Bible on your iPhone or your iPad. Get used to a physical Bible because if the internet went down, you'll be in spiritual darkness. If the power went off, the power in your life has just also been unplugged. Get a physical Bible, it doesn't matter the size, because the Word of God is not based on the size of the text, but the content, which is the living Word. We're living in a generation where the commission to Timothy is to preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. My wife and I have been to more than 60 countries on our traveling itinerary. And almost every place we go, we hear people saying, whatever happened to this, and whatever happened to the message, whatever happened to the Sabbath, whatever happened to the things that we knew and understood from generation to generation were balanced in our own approach to worship. Whatever happened to those things? People often no longer hear the message about the second coming of Christ. They say, whatever happened? Is Jesus not coming again? Let me tell you tonight, Jesus is coming again. Can you say amen? We no longer hear about that, but let me tell you as I, as I wind up this talk about the power of God's Word, let me tell you why it's important. The Word of God is the most powerful weapon on earth. It can outlast any slaughter and transform any life. It can humble the exalted and educate the simple, the Word of God. The Word of God is light in the darkness and a path to the lost. It can encourage the weak and comfort the weary, the Word of God. If you're hungry, it will feed you. If you are thirsty, the Word of God will soothe you. I speak of nothing other than the Holy Bible. This book reveals the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its precepts are binding, its history is true, and its decisions are immutable. 
Read the Bible to be wise. Believe it to be saved and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. The Bible is the traveler's map and the Christian charter. It cannot lie, but it can detect one. It has no pulse, and yet it lives. In the Bible, paradise is, res is restored, heaven open, and the gates of hell are closed. Christ is its grand subject. Our good is its design, and the glory of God is its end. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mind of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure, the word of God. It will reward the greatest labor and condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. Paul turned the world upside down with it. Elijah called down fire through it, and God created the world by it. It cannot be stopped, prevented, denied, or destroyed. It will outlive any novel and outlast any show. The Bible is divine, dynamic, didactic, and delightful at the same time. The Bible is a conundrum to the proud and a solution to the humble. It can open and close your eyes at the same time. It can confuse the scoffer, but enlighten the seeker all in a single moment. The book, the book of books, the book of life, the book of God, the Bible, the revelation of God to man, but it comes with a warning. Listen to the warning. This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Reading and confessing this book will do the following. It will terrify the devil, stupefy the rebellious, mystify the world, pacify the critics, ratify, ratify the covenant, edify the church, magnify the word, and glorify the Lord. And you know what? It is still the number one best-selling book of all times. So as you go out into the world, Take your books, take your aspirations, take your degrees, but whatever you do, do not forget to take and live by the Word of God. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we live in a challenging age, an age that still extends to us all the advantages of modern technology. Wisdom that was not available, intellect, understanding, information that was not available just 10 years ago is flooding our doorsteps today. It is pouring through the portals of the internet. The superhighways of technology are calling us by its voice that takes no for an answer. We pray this evening, Lord, as we prepare to go forth into the world, that we will go forth with one determined purpose, and that is to be ready at a moment's notice to respond to the voice of the life giver when he returns. Precious Lord, thank you for these medical students. We know that lives are going to be transformed by their intellect, by their understanding, by their education. But while they're getting what the world has to offer, we pray that they do not forget to get Jesus. And as we leave the walls of the safety of this campus, as they go out into the world, maybe the Philippines or some other place around the globe, may they carry the sword of the Spirit by their side so that when the enemy comes knocking, they can be successful by saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. If the Word brought success to Jesus, how much more do we need the Word of God in these closing hours of earth's history? So send us forth not only to read God's Word, but in a special way to reflect it through our lives so that when Jesus comes, so that when he breaks the clouds, he'll have no problem finding us as we reflect his glory in this world. This we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, okay, my wife told me to sing a song. Okay, what do I have? Okay, let me see what I can do. I don't know, I've been talking for 200 hours already. Let me see what I have. 
Well, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just do something a cappella. I don't know. Would that be okay? Well, maybe I'll have my quartet come up and sing with me. No. There's no need. And sitting down in the back. Come on up here, guys. Where are they? Let's have fun a little bit here. Let's break the ice. Where are my tenor, alto, no, my tenor, bass, and first tenor? Yeah, come on up here. Where's my high voice? Oh, there he is. We're going to give you the microphone because your voice was quiet the other day. Come on up. When I walked in these halls the other day, these guys pulled me aside and said, we have to sing God to do right. So, so come Saturday night, they're going to be on the program. It's going to be their debut. <laughs> and we're going to show the video of the anniversary celebration uh, in 2016 when we sang the song together. I have it on my iPad, but I'll wait till Saturday night. Got to have you come for something. Are you ready? Better get around the microphone. That's right, that's for you. Cause you <laughs> Get close. Oh, you, you need the lyrics? <laughs> now, I, I looked on the internet, and I'll show you this later. I have about like 35 or 40 different downloads from YouTubes of all these groups that have been trying to sing God to do right. But, um, Praise the Lord, I'm, one of the, I'm the original with that one. Ready? There's, ready? There's no need in standing. <laughs> you got to be ready. This is your debut. Ready? There's no need in standing up for the right. Unless you're going to stand up. Against the wrong, tell me how you're gonna ever stop of being weak, lest you make your mind up to be strong. Well, you got to do right, cause it won't belong, it won't belong. Let me tell you that it's easy. To hate your enemies and it's just as easy to love your friends they tell me you will have to love alike the bible tells you you got to let the love of god come in well you got to do right because it won't belong it won't belong don't you want to love him better don't you want to love him more? Can't you hear the Savior knocking? He's knocking at your door. Don't you want to make haste to meet your maker before you got to deal with the undertaker? He will take you right now if you are willing. Don't you know the Bible? It's fulfilled. Well, you got to do right. Cause it won't belong, it won't belong. You got to do right. Oh, live a life, cause it won't belong. It won't belong. You got to do right. Oh, live a life. You got to do right. Oh, live a life. You got to do right. Oh, live a life. You got to do right. Oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, right. Their CD is coming out next week. <laughs> We've been having fun. I, they helped me. Uh, my voice has been so tired. I've been talking so much. So thank you for, for helping me out. If you can make it Saturday evening, I'm praying for the Lord to give me my voice back. But um, whatever he gives me, I'll give him the glory for it. Uh, as you go, also, 
I have a booklet that's with me, the Three Angels Messages booklets. And we have some of those with us. Uh, Saturday evening, we want to make them available to you because, in fact, if you have not read the Three Angels Messages before, Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12, we have a beautiful, matter of fact, Doctor, I have one in my back. Here it is, very thin, for those of you who are on the go, fast-moving college, university students. Only 45 pages. It's a perfect book to share with someone if you want to share the everlasting gospel. It not only talks about what those messages are, but it reveals Jesus, the Lamb of God. It makes it very clear about the love of God. It makes all the issues of Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12 very, very clear. So stop by, and I pray that as you go, now some of you, this is true, we will never see you again until Jesus return. I pray that you'll be faithful, that not only will you bring healing to someone else's hearts, someone else's life, but that Jesus will bring healing and wholeness to your life. Be successful, but in getting the world, don't forget to get Jesus. Amen, someone? Honey, do you want to say anything to these students? You're, you're a lady. You sure? Okay. She doesn't want me. I don't want... She, are you sure? You don't want to just say hello or anything? Ah, oh, come on, honey. Just come on up. She, if, I hope the hospital is open 24 hours. No, just kidding. No, she just, they w just want to see you. And just say, you don't have to say, you don't have to preach. I already did that. Just say hello or something like that. <laughs> I need medical attention. <laughs> everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I don't know why he did this to me. Dr. Mendoza was oh. looking at me. Um, I, my lady. family, I was born in England. My parents are from Jamaica and this country reminds me of a lot of Jamaica and I'm just happy to be here. I love the people. Um, when you come to my house, all I do is feed you. <laughs> I love to entertain. <laughs> so you need to come to America, okay? <laughs> you are all invited on the same day. <laughs> and um, I met him in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, at our church. And we'll talk about that Saturday evening, Sabbath evening. And he's the love of my life. And, <laughs> and she's is. the love of... You know, matter of fact, we are the love of each other's life. When, when we call our phone we say call the love, love of my, my life, life Angela mm -hmm. and it says calling the love of my life Angela <laughs> <laughs> and mine says the same the love of my life John call the love of my life John and so and it says calling the love of my life John <laughs> I'm happy to be here so happy to meet all of you and everyone's been so gracious so friendly Dr. Mendoza and of course uh, Pastor Rex, Joy, and the, um, just and the family, and our little Rio, we we just love you guys, and look forward to seeing more of you. We are only here until Monday, and we go back home, and then we're going to Battle Creek, Michigan. So then, of course, he has a church, so we have a church, and he has um, class, Sabbath school class every Sabbath. He teaches new believers class every Sabbath. He teaches that. But anyway, I'm glad to be here, glad to get to know you all, and God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm coming with you. Wait for me. Don't leave. If you want to keep in touch with us, just my last name, johnlomakang.com. It's that simple. We're on Facebook and all over the place. My wife has room for more friends. I don't, but that's okay. Thanks. Thank you so much for what you do for the cause of God and for the lives that will be touched. Today we were in the hospital and um, praying for a young man whose life is slipping away. He's just in his 50s. Uh, his daughter, I think Marietta, or Martina. Yeah, her father. Remember her in your prayer. The only daughter, we were by his bedside today, only child. And um, the doctors have done as much as they could for him. But um, we pray. Life is so uncertain. We pray that you'll be able to bring healing and comfort not only medically to your patients, but if you, when you're standing by the bedside of someone whose life is slipping away, 
If you know Jesus, you'll be able to share him with him at those very closing moments. I said in a, I was invited to go to a University of North Dakota to speak to some university students. And I don't know if you've heard of, I'm just taking a grist, I don't know if you've heard of a man by the name of Spike Lee. He's a very well-known producer in America. And he was invited the week before to come and speak to that same class, and they gave him $25,000 to speak for 40 minutes. 25,000 US dollars to speak for 40 minutes. They did not give me $25,000 to speak for, four. they didn't give me $1,000 to speak for 40 minutes, just my airfare and just a little honorarium. But I was so encouraged after I spoke to them, I said, ask me any question you want. And they said, you know what? We learn more from you than we learn from Spike Lee. You know why? Because Spike Lee came to talk about the world. I came to talk about Jesus. So when you know Jesus, the world will, will dazzle, you, dazzle you with their fame and their fortune and their medals and their trophies and their idols and their awards. But when you know Jesus, you are a part of a kingdom that will never end. So take Jesus with you into the medical field because he is the master physician. God bless you until we see you again. And uh, Pastor X, will you want to come up and, oh, you're going to have a closing song? Okay, and then Pastor X, maybe, I'd like, like to invite you to have a closing prayer. Pastor X is a good friend of mine. We, we have come to know, I've, I, I know something about him. He likes peanut butter and jelly, and so do I. But he has a wonderful dedication for ministry. I've come to appreciate him. He just missed one, la one night last night, and I miss him already. And so we're going to be like, uh, we're going to be friends for life after we go back home and his wife Joy and his little daughter Rio Bella, beautiful river, she is a blast. So if you ever come to America, uh, we say this in Spanish, mi casa, su casa. What does that mean? My house is your house. Um, for our closing song, let us all stand and sing, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light, then why should I fear? By day and by night, His presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. This blessed persuasion, the Spirit.
indeed you are our light. Your word is a lamp unto, my, unto our feet and a light unto our path. And tonight we have seen that. We, have, we are amazed by the power of your word. And we pray that it will really be like a two-edged sword through us that we can see through and get through the hearts of people that we can come across with especially these young people who will someday become will become your medical missionaries i pray the lord that they will not only be able to touch the physical aspect of a person's life but even their soul through their influence by sharing jesus to people that they will come in contact with I also pray for the teachers, especially uh, their dean who rallies these young people together with the teachers into becoming your ambassadors someday. Indeed, Lord, your presence has been here in this campus even until tonight since the time that you sent your servant, Pastor John. And I pray that you continue to bless him and bless us all. May there be a true revival and reformation in this campus as we go through this series of revival meetings and lord i pray that your holy angels continue to be with us as we dismiss from from this place in christ's name we pray amen Guys, uh, let's have a picture taking lang kasi ano. Uh, can I request all the students and faculties to go here in the stairs so that we have we can take our picture. Um guys, double time po tayo.